Star Trek Online is really the first chance that players and Star Trek fans will get the opportunity to really live in the Star Trek universe. Star Trek Online is a massive multiplayer world that we're creating. We're taking this fantastic universe that's been created through the television shows and through the movies and expanding upon it in a new medium. And it's not just going to be a little environment. You're going to be able to see new things, new cultures introduced, new races, environments introduced down the lifespan of this property. The way we're gearing this whole thing is for the casual user. So they'll hop right in, they'll be very familiar with the whole system, how to set up your avatar, how to get into the world, how to interact with other players, how to interact with quest givers, and, and just explore. We're introducing new landscapes, and we're able to take you know the bits and pieces that we've seen from the sets and the movies and flesh them out into large landscapes, and you'll be able to traverse across these landscapes. We're going to be envisioning a Klingon homeworld. Everything about that homeworld, you'd be walking around. So buildings, once again, architecture, how is this going to feel for the player or multiple players in this environment? It's going to be awesome to see everyone congregating in these cities and with their own individual costumes and personality shining through. If you look at the original series Gene Roddenberry created, he had such a diversity on the bridge the Scotsman and the Russian Chekhov, all that influence. And so you're already geared for that world of Star Trek of interacting with people from not only other races, but from around the world. And you can start out as a Klingon or Ferengi or Cardassian. You start out one of many different races, but if you start as a human, you actually start at the Academy in San Francisco. And you start out getting your training there. And within the first few hours of gameplay, you're given a small starship to head on out into space ventured out into like a whole new series of Federation ships where you have like the engineering group, the science group, the battle group, all these different kind of variations which you never had in the features or the shows. So there's pretty much something for everybody. And then once you customize it, it's even more your own vessel. And that's what's kind of unique about this game is it's very independent. We want to make it a rich experience. We want to make you really feel like your ship is cruising around planets and nebulas and, and all kinds of interesting interactions in space. You'll find planets, you'll find space stations. Now, the space stations are fantastic for the players because it's another thing you get to explore. You'll go on there, you'll trade on there, you'll meet other players, and you'll be able to dock your ship and then hop back in and travel around to another part of the galaxy. And as the player heads out into the galaxy, they'll explore more and more, and the world will essentially grow. And that's important for the player, that you feel a sense of discovery and exploration. Of course, very important for Star Trek that players feel that sense of exploration. So we're trying to create a world that really feels like it has no bounds for the player, so they can just keep on going out into space and keep finding new things every time they log in to play the game. I don't think what you'd consider a restriction now, I don't think will be there at all in the future. I think the game will constantly progress and the things you can do will just be whatever you can imagine.